Okay, we are ready for the worksheet 8C, Math 4 course. And uh, this actually is funny when you think about it. Our, our initial definition of binomial is that there are two outcomes, either success or failure, you know, true or false, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, that, that, I love that face. All right. Now, speaking of, we have to figure out whether these fit uh, as a binomial dis uh, distribution or not. Um, if it does, explain why each condition is met. If it does not, say what condition was not met. Um, so here, we're flipping a coin, and I guess we need to go back and um, uh, look at the list. Uh, from the notes. I think I'm going to do this color coded to where it's green if it's yes and red if it's no. Uh, so I flipped a coin 12 times. Uh, we have a fixed number of events. We have uh, independent events that the first flip does not affect the second flip. Um, uh, you know, we have success and failure. Either it's heads or it's not, you know. Uh, and then the probability is the same. It's, you know, so uh, we have 12 independent events. And I said I was going to be doing green for this, didn't I? Twelve independent events. Two outcomes and probability is the same each time. Okay, it's one out of two, and you get either heads or tails. All right, I flip a coin and count how many times it takes to land on a head. How many times it takes to land on a head? That sounds like you don't know how many events you've got. That's a problem. That's a problem. All right, I roll a die 100 times and I count how many times I get a four. Okay, so uh, it sounds good so far. We have 100 independent events two outcomes either yes or no and then uh, the probability is the same each time The two outcomes is uh, uh, yes or no. And the probability is the same each time. All right. Now, if I roll a die 100 times and count how many of each number I get. How many of each number? There are six ways that that could happen. This is not a case of yes or no. That's where this is, is uh, breaking the rule. Um, all right, spinner 20 times, count how many times it lands on blue. All right, so you have 20 independent events. Yes or no outcomes and probability the same, which we, we don't know what the probability is of landing on blue, but you know it's the same spinner, so it should be the same probability each time. 
throw a bean bag at a cornhole 10, time, uh, 10 times. I received coaching after each throw. We kind of talked about that. Um, coaching after each throw is going to change the probability. Hopefully, yeah. So, you know, it's important to be able to recognize which situations will work with a binomial distribution and which ones don't. And it's one of those four elements that they're usually guilty of. All right. Finster wants to do a sampling experiment on a city where 34% of the people prefer to not eat meat. Finster takes a simple random sample of nine people. All right, not a huge sample, but we want to keep this small. All right, does this satisfy the requirements of a binomial distribution? Um, he, you know, the, the number of events where, you know, if, if he does a sample with nine people, uh, that's going to be his limit. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, you know, he, he's only going to have nine responses. Uh, when he asked these nine people, you know, do you prefer not to eat meat or, or, or yes or no? Uh, so that's the other thing is that this is, you know, there are two outcomes, yes or no. Um, and we'll have to presume at this distance, if it's a simple random sample, then, you know, what one person is not going to affect what another person says. Uh, so we're, we're going to believe that this is independent. And then the probability of success um, should be consistent. Um, I know somebody else has figured out 34% uh, uh, do not eat meat. And so he's just taking a sample to see if they were right, uh, I guess. So um, yes, it does satisfy the requirements was the probability finds exactly three who don't eat meat. Well, remember we need to set this up. NCR, there were nine altogether and we want exactly three who don't eat meat. Now we said that there was a 34% chance that they don't eat meat. Which means you have a 66% chance that they do. And meanwhile, our exponents, that three is going to go right here. And nine minus three is going to go right here. And so we're going to go to Desmos and plug that in and see what happens. I'm going to shrink this. Yeah, you can still see most of that. And there's the Desmos. I've got that set up there. So let's get our keypad and I'm going to click over off screen on stats and NCR and there's the NCR that shows up and then we're going to do 9 comma 3 parenthesis 0 0.34 0 0.66 and then here we'll go back and do the exponents of 3 goes there and I hate when it does that Ah, I wish I knew what I was doing that did that exact thing. All right, let's try the guy on the end first. That is usually what's causing my biggest grief. All right, there we go. And so we've got 0.27288. I'm going to say 0.273. Close enough. It's so about 27% uh, probability that he'll find exactly three. Well, when you think about it, um, exactly three would be about 34%. A three out of nine, that's one third, that's 33%, 34%, that, you know. Statistically, he should find three people out of the nine. Uh, let's keep going with this. All right, so um, 
What is the probability that he finds more than five who won't eat meat? All right, more than five would be six, seven, eight, nine, which means we're going to have to figure out uh, NCR nine, six, nine, seven, nine, eight, nine, and nine. And again, you have your 34 and your 66. And then we go back in and we add our exponents. That 6 goes here, that 7 goes here, 8, 9. 9 minus 6 is 3, 9 minus 7 is 2, 1, 0. And so that's what we got to plug in and then add these four decimals. So let's see, this is going to be 6. This is going to be 6. And that last one is going to be 3. And we get 0.037. And I think I'm just going to keep it at three decimals here for the sake of keeping it simple. And then we go through and we do 7. And 7. Oops. And then we do 2. We get 0, 0, 008. I have a feeling this is going to be really easy to add. We get eight, eight, and one. So we get zero, zero, one. I have a feeling this last one is going to be too small to count, but we need to do our due diligence and just make sure that it happens that way. Yeah, that one's going to be zero, zero, zero. So by the time I add these together, 15 and one makes 16, carry the one, I get a four there and that's it. So oh, probability that he will find more than five is about four and a half percent. Now this is the thing that I absolutely love about decimals is that instead of having to rekey every formula, you know, from scratch. All I have to do is just change a couple of numbers and uh, copy the answer. And this goes so much faster than it used to with a TI-84. All right. How many people should he expect to find who don't eat meat? Hmm. Well, you know, this gets back to that original question of, um, you know, because if we add uh, the, the distribution table is not going to help us here because those percentages add up to 100, you know, 100 percent. So that's that's that, this is asking a different question. Um, this is actually a lot simpler than that. It gets back to the, the, the statement I made earlier. That, uh, you know, if you ask nine people, I would expect three of them. Uh, you're, you're literally saying 0.34 times nine. So about three people. 
And notice the, the, the change of the question. They didn't ask you about percentages or probabilities or anything like that. They just said, how many? And uh, sometimes you have to back up and, uh, you know, it, it seems almost too easy. Uh, but that's literally what they wanted. All right, Norbert plays soccer, apparently, and uh, he averages 60%. He scores 60% of the times he has a shot on goal. He has four shots in today's game. So what is the probability of scoring exactly two, and what is the probability of scoring at least two? Now, at least two would be two or three or four. So we need to pursue all three of these to be able to answer uh, these questions. So we're going to do NCR. Now, there were four shots altogether, and we're going to do two and three out of the four and four out of the four. Now, he has a 60% shooter, which means 40% of the time he misses. And as far as our exponents go, that two should go there, that three should go there, and a four. Four minus two, four minus three, four minus four. And so that's what we need to plug in and figure out in decimals. can't scoot it anymore, but y'all know what's going on there. That's going to be a four and a two. And back to point six. Our first exponent is a two. And that is a two. All right, so we got point three, four, five, six. All right, since it stops, I'm going to go ahead and do four decimal places. Now let's see what happens when we do three here, three here. Oops, hate when that happens. And then one here. And we'll get three, four, five, six. Okay, that's interesting. And technically, we could subtract these from 100% and uh, figure out what the answer should be. 1296. All right, so what are the chances of scoring exactly two, two goals? 0.3456. What is his probability of scoring at least two? All right, that's 18. That's 20. Carry the two, that's going to make it 12. Carry the one, that's going to make it eight. So, as a six, uh, an 82% chance of scoring at least two goals. Okay. All right, scoring no more than two goals. That includes the two itself. We don't have to figure him, but we do have to figure out the other two, four shots with nothing, four shots with one goal. And then we've already got uh, the, the, the last one. Uh, let's see, that is 60% and 40%. I got a zero here and a one there. 
and 4 minus 0 is 4, and 4 minus 1 is 3. And we said that the 2 was 0.3456. All right, so let's get busy with Desmos and figure out for 0. And four on the end. It's going to be O two five six. And then we go to there and we change it to ones. And a three. And we got one five three six. So 18 and 14 carry the 1, we get 12 and we get 5. So he has a 52% chance of scoring no more than two goals at 0, 1, or. Now, I don't know, should we count 0? I think zero should be counted. It is possible that he scored zero goals. You know, that would be no more than two. All right. So that is that one. Tennis player makes successful serve 70% of the time. So uh, how many, if she serves six times, What's the probability she gets all six? Well, that would be NCR six out of six. She is a 70% shot, 30% failure, six minus six is zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and set up this other one at the same time. That four belongs here, six minus four belongs here. So now we can go to Desmos and plug those in. All right. So she has almost 12% chance of getting all six serves in bounds. And so we go back and we say, all right, what about four? And that turns out to be three, two, four, one. at least for four serves. That means four or less. So we're going to have to figure out none, one. And we did six and four up here, so we won't have to do four again. But we will have to do these other ones. She is a 70% server. going to go on zero, one, two, three, four, 
and 4 minus 0, 4 minus 1, 4 minus 2, and so on and so forth. Oh, shoot. She's doing six turns, isn't she? And she's going to change this number as well. I thought something was feeling funny about that. All right. Six. This is going to be six minus zero, six minus one, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I knew that they this one should go down and this one should go up. But I also knew that we weren't doing the full set, so they uh, we shouldn't they shouldn't meet. Um, let's see now. What was six and four? That was three, two, four, one. We already know that one. So uh, what's the probability she gets at least four serves in? That's four or more. Oh, really? Did I just do that? At least four. That's four or more. That means we only have to really chase after six, five. All right. I apologize for that. Um, And this, and this, and this. Five goes there, six minus five is one. And the NCR six, six, we already know, is one, one, seven, six. Like I said, you really, really got to be careful of the English language on this. All right, so let's see what our missing number is. Six, five, five goes up there, one goes over there, and we have 3025. That's going to make 12, carry the one, 14, carry the one, four, Three is four, and that makes seven. Um, at least four, four, five, or six serves. Yeah, and I, I, I did it that way because I realized that you'd already done six and you'd already done four, and so you really only needed one more, and so it was not my intention to have you do a whole stack of them. All right. So there we are. Now, no more than four serves. Here we go the other way. Uh, so now we are going to do the other. All right, six, zero. I guess at some point I really did want you to do all of them. We've already got four, so we don't have to redo that one. The other thing about this is that sometimes it can be a bit tedious. Zero, one, two, three, four, six minus zero, six minus one, six minus two, and so on and so forth. Now this guy, six, four, turned out to be three, two, four, one. No more than four includes four and everything below it. All right, so here we go. And again, the good news is that all I have to do is just go up here and change a couple of numbers. And I have my answer. Now this first one is 0 0.1237. All right, and then we Slip in a one, 
and a 5. And I got a 1, a 2. Come back over here. Let me slip in a two there, two there, and a four there. I get oh five nine five. And one more. And one eight five two. So 9 and 7 make 16, 17, 10, 15, 19, carry the 1, 2, 7, 15, 17, carry the 1, 2, 5. So a 58% chance that uh, she'll get no more than four. I find that curious that here we have 74% chance she'll get four or more, 57% or 58% chance she'll get four or less. But also bear in mind, uh, her success rate is generally 70%. Um, and four out of six would be considered 66%. So yeah, she should be a little bit above that. All right. Now is this, yeah, this is the last one here. Uh, a spinner has four equal fields. Uh, so that means that there is a one out of four chance on each of them equally. All right, spins the spinner four times, wins a dollar each time he lands on red, but if he loses three, if he does not land on red. All right. So, you know, it's basically red and not red is what's going on here. All right. So he spins the spinner four times. So we have no reds. One red. Two reds. Three reds and all four reds. Now, there is a one out of four chance of landing in the red. Which means there is a 75% chance of not landing on the red. This already does not sound like a good game to me. But let's see what the numbers say. They can be deceiving. Now, um, there's the zero, so there's the zero, and the one, and the two, and so on. Four minus zero is four, four minus one is three, and two, and one, and zero. All right. Now, You know, since we're doing all of them, you realize that all of the probabilities should add up to 100%. So it makes no sense to do that. But the expectation, the, ex the expected value, that's a different story. Well, first, we need probabilities. So we'll do four to zero. And we get three one six four. And then we go back and we change to ones. One here, one here, three there. Four two one nine. And then we change to two. We get 2109. 
we get four zero four six nine. And then the last one. And we get zero zero three nine. Now we've got our we've got our probabilities worked out. Now we got to figure out um, what about the money. Um, now it does not say how much it costs for him, so we can't figure we can't factor that in. A uh, dollar for each time he lands on red. But if he, he loses three if he does not land on red in any spin. So this one he this would be times negative three. Now, if he lands on one red, he wins a dollar. If he lands on two reds, two dollars. Three reds, three dollars. And four reds, he gets four dollars. So maybe this is not such a bad game after all. Let's see what happens here. I'm gonna pause and do the calculating and come back. Okay, I've added all of those together. I, you know, I've multiplied across with each one of those. This guy up here is negative. And by the time I put them all together here, I get a grand total of 0508. So, uh, and that is positive. So what that is basically telling you is that his expectation is five cents a game. So, uh, you know, not for nothing, but that's about as close to a fair game as you could ask. <laughs> uh, you know, if he wins a nickel on the average, if he plays it a thousand times, he'll average earning a nickel every time. So uh, uh, that is his expected value. And I believe that is, yes, so we are done with this worksheet.